Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, there has been a lot of discussion about battery replacement for electric cars. In fact, it is the hottest topic right now because of the potential cost that might affect you if you have to replace the battery due to accident or some other damages, and it might cost even more than the car itself. For example, there has been a recent discussion about what happened to a Hyundai Ioniq 5 owner whose battery replacement appears to cost more than $60,000 and therefore the car was written off even though it was only about a year old. So obviously as an engineer, a lot of people have been asking me why does a battery cost so much and what could be done either by consumer or by the automakers to avoid these kind of issues in the future. And I think there's a lot that we can do to avoid both the high cost of battery replacement and also to prevent you from getting into a similar situation that this person had gone through recently. So I want to talk about this in the context of myself who happens to own this Lexus RZ or RZ which is also a fully electric car. It's one of our cars in our company fleet and we've had it for maybe half a year or so but what if we get into accident or something happens to the battery underneath the vehicle would we go through the same kind of problem as this person and have to write off this vehicle because the battery costs so much to replace. So let me explain to you as an engineer exactly what's going on. Let's go. Welcome back. So a few things you need to keep in mind. One is the fact that the batteries are usually and almost always underneath the vehicle right on the bottom. So in the case of uh, this RZ or RZ, the battery will be right on the bottom from front all the way to here between the two wheels and pretty well all the electric cars have the same setup for a couple of reasons one is the fact that the battery is the heaviest component and therefore you want that to be as low as possible to give a vehicle lower center of gravity so the car feels more stable also if the battery pack is between the two wheels it's protected from accidents either in the front or in the rear in the case of impact most likely the battery pack will be protected because of where they are located obviously in the case of this example we talked about with Ionic 5 uh, this owner drove over something and it impacted underneath so that's something of an unusual situation and you can't avoid that perhaps but generally speaking it's in the bottom underneath between the two wheels for protection reasons but that also means that you're open to potential damage from underneath if you go over something or um, if you make a mistake and you happen to drive on some uh, off-road course and some piece of rock or wood might impact the bottom of the battery and even with the battery protection you could still damage the battery so that's first of all one problem with electric cars is the placement of the battery now in the future as an engineer what i would suggest to the automakers and they probably already know this is to come up with a design in which the battery packs are not one large unit. If they're able to break it into maybe two or three components, then in that case you can then strategically place the battery in different parts of the vehicle, not always on the bottom. So maybe, uh, maybe half the batteries is on the bottom and maybe one battery pack right behind the firewall so that it's away from the front but it's also away from the bottom and perhaps another battery pack can be right behind the back seat here uh, to, between the rear passenger seat and the trunk and that way you would protect it from underneath and you minimize the potential damage for the batteries but right now that is not possible because of the way the batteries are designed and they are very densely packed into a single package and that's why they're all underneath but I think if the engineering group or engineering team can come up with a newer battery such as a solid state in the future it'll be easier to break them apart and then put them in strategic different places and I'm almost 100% sure that company like Toyota with a new solid state battery coming up is probably already thinking about that so they don't have all the batteries on the bottom of a car so that's one thing that car company can change the second thing that people need to keep in mind and also the car companies need to keep in mind is this so-called battery protection cover which is right underneath the battery and it is designed to prevent or to minimize impact from the road to the battery pack itself so if for example you drive over a rock or a piece of rock kicks into the bottom of the cover then it will hit the protection cover and not damage the battery pack now in the case of a Hyundai Ioniq 5 story what happened was that the battery cover was somewhat damaged and it indicated the battery itself about the cover appears to be damaged but they never took the cover off so obviously they never found out exactly what happened but to prevent that problem all they have to do is create something similar to what uh, off-road vehicles like a 4Runner might have 
uh, when they have an actual protection underneath, they're much thicker and bigger than what is on a typical battery pack. So if they actually kind of treat some of these electric cars as almost off-road capable vehicle and make the protection cover thicker, bigger, and to have more space between the protection cover and the battery, then there's a lot less chance of the battery themselves getting damaged if there's an impact underneath. As well, they can sandwich some kind of absorbent material, much like what we have in the front bumper or rear bumper, between the battery and the battery protection cover. And that way, once again, if you happen to drive over something, it's the battery cover and the absorbent material that takes all the shocks and the battery will be actually kept intact. Those are some stuff that car companies are not doing currently because once again, they're trying to put the battery as low as possible away from the passenger compartment because the higher the battery pack, obviously less space there is in the interior of the car. So those are some of the packaging problems they have to deal with. But because of this recent issue that's coming up, I think car companies have to realize they'll have to sacrifice some of the interior packaging space so that they can maximize the safety and the protection of the battery underneath. Now keep in mind that in the future, when the solid state battery finally comes out, it will mitigate some of this problem because by nature, solid state batteries is much stronger and safer because it is based on solid materials versus liquid materials and therefore it will be much easier to protect the battery and keep them protected compared to a current battery system which is much more sensitive to any kind of damages or impact by the way tesla seems to be one step ahead of its competitors because for a long time now they've had titanium based battery protection cover underneath which is much stronger than what we are seeing in other automakers battery protection so tesla is obviously aware of the potential damage to the battery and seems to have designed something that's much more robust tough and durable and that's perhaps why they haven't had this problem in terms of battery being damaged by driving over something the third thing to keep in mind is that right now electric cars are still a bit of a niche product we're not selling a huge amount of these electric cars and that itself poses a problem because of a simple reason which is economy of scale if and when the electric cars actually finally reach mainstream and we are selling multiple hundreds of thousands of dollar worth of electric cars and therefore a car company can then economize the cost per car then the replacement cost of the batteries will automatically go down because we have just so many electric cars on the road and that will allow the manufacturing efficiency to be achieved and so forth so the cost will come down anyways right now with the number of electric cars that's selling it's just not possible to do that because there's so much capital cost involved in designing and developing uh, electric cars and the battery pack that goes with it what do i mean by capital cost well that's everything from product development design and research as well as manufacturing infrastructure to create one of a kind battery pack that is only used for that particular vehicle. In the future, what they have to do, and I'm sure, again, they're working on this, is to standardize the battery pack regardless of the type of car or size of the vehicle, and that way you can economize the scale even more and bring the cost down so that whether it's Lexus RZ or, let's say, in the future, a Tacoma electric truck, the battery packs are the same. And even better, if they can actually standardize the battery packs across the industry, among different brands so for example toyota nissan honda gm whatever if they start using the same kind of battery then you can really bring the cost down and none of these things will be an issue but of course that's a problem in terms of industry because they're all competing with each other and very unlikely that they're going to share secrets or engineering background with each other and therefore car companies will probably continue to produce different batteries for different vehicles using their own technology and so therefore that might take many many years before we are able to standardize some kind of a battery technology and bring the cost down so that's another reason to keep in mind the next point i want to talk about is something that they can do right away which is all to do with how the dealers and the automakers and the insurance companies can work together to help each other out and bring the cost down by making sure that the knowledge is shared discussed and collaborated before making decisions about the battery pack now according to what the hyundai officials have said looks like that is already taking place because they are making sure that hyundai dealers in the future will not make a decision about battery replacement without first consulting hyundai as an automaker so that is going to improve a lot 
but you know what I don't know that if all the automakers have that set up yet so you might still end up in a situation where the dealer themselves take the matter in their own hands and decide what to do with the battery in conjunction with the insurance company which is most likely not all that interested in figuring out what's happening in the background and likely to write off the car but if they can set up a joint system or what we call the collaborated network and all the engineers and technicians can work together from a dealers from the insurance company and of course the automakers and their technicians then each battery incident can be reviewed from a technical perspective and they can actually diagnose properly and make the right decision and this is something that didn't happen with this Aonic 5 situation if they did they most likely would have found out that the battery was not damaged and only the protection cover needs to be replaced and they could have avoided this whole thing together. Now I'm actually involved in a number of collaborative business and engineering systems so I know how this system works and it's not easy to set up but it can be done and it needs to be done so that across the industry not just with Hyundai but across all the automakers they need to come up with a standardized method for diagnosing and to figuring out what's wrong with the battery and work with each other to minimize disruption and to minimize unnecessary replacement and I think this is something they can do right away with all the automakers so that consumers like ourselves have some kind of assurance that when we take a car in for uh, diagnostic work to do with the battery things won't go out of control and we end up with a huge bill or a huge cost for replacing the batteries. So I think that is something that they are beginning to realize. All the car companies and technicians and dealers are talking about this right now. It might take a year or two to get it sorted, but I'm confident that at least a collaboration among the dealers, the insurance companies, and the manufacturers will improve. But I think you guys as a consumer really need to push for that. And if you ever wonder what's happening with your battery pack in the electric car, don't take the dealers for granted. Make sure that they are contacting the automaker itself and to get the professional opinion from the technician, from the car companies, so that decisions can be made wisely and properly and not allow them to jump into some kind of conclusion. So that's, I think, the important part. So does that mean that you should avoid buying electric cars? Well, no, not really, because if more people buy electric cars and it becomes more common, eventually the cost of battery packs will go down and economy of scale will take place and everything will become more normalized. So I don't want you to give up on buying electric cars because that's the future anyway. So it's a bit of a chicken egg thing. When the volume of the electric cars increase and car companies become smarter and they introduce solid state batteries, many of these problems will simply go away, but it's going to take time. And during this time, you might just avoid buying electric cars altogether. And I will totally understand if that's the case. But as someone who understands intimately how the electrical system works, and how the auto industry works behind the scene, I think the best solution is that all of us slowly but surely embrace electric cars and try to encourage the car companies to work with each other and to standardize the components because eventually then the problem will go away. And what you can do to protect yourself for now if you were to buy an electric car is something that is not super difficult to do but will require some imagination and thinking which is to take this car, something like RZ, to a body shop and maybe get them to craft up or design another protection underneath the vehicle. This may void the warranty if it actually involves drilling into battery packs or anything close to that battery pack, but if you can find a really clever technician to create a cover that could be attached without drilling into any sensitive area, that is something that maybe you can consider or maybe the car companies can consider in the future. Uh, because having a double protection or another system underneath to protect it will possibly prevent any damage to the first protection cover that comes from the automakers. Ultimately, the ideal situation is if one of the aftermarket companies can actually design this uh, secondary battery protection cover that can be bolted onto any one of the electric cars uh, easily and quickly and safely without voiding a warranty, then of course that will be the best solution because then you can perhaps buy uh, additional protection cover, get it installed, and you've got two layers of protection uh, underneath the vehicle so that there's much less chance of the battery themselves getting damaged. Hopefully, uh, one of the aftermarket companies are thinking of doing this for popular EVs that's available right now. Another thing you can do is what the truck owners often do, which is to raise the car 
using different suspension or different kind of a components and put a bigger tire on. Because what will happen then is that you will simply raise the battery pack higher above the ground and there will be much less chance of underneath getting damaged if you happen to drive over something. Now that will change the dynamics of the vehicle and you could void the warranty if you go extreme, but if you're simply raising it by inch or inch and a half or so by using a different suspension or different uh, shocks or different spring, that wouldn't negate the warranty and it will just give you extra protection if you're driving in some rough road and you're worried about something hitting underneath. Just simply raise the vehicle and that will give you additional protections. The last point to keep in mind is that before you buy an electric car, go to a dealership and go to their parts or service department and find out how much a new battery will cost if they have to be replaced for some reason, whether it's an accident or whatever it might be. And that way you have some idea of the cost of replacement in the case that you have to do so. You might find that from manufacturers to manufacturer, maybe even from dealer to dealer, the cost of a battery replacement can be quite different. Also do check the full warranty information and the details behind it to make sure that you are protected uh, against any kind of battery defects or problem down the road and how long that coverage might be. Those are some of the things you can do before you actually decide on which electric car to buy. So those are some of the potential things that we can do to help you reduce the chance of the battery packs being damaged. But at the end of the day, some of these problems won't be resolved until we have a mass market for electric cars and until automakers come up with a different battery technology, such as the solid state batteries, which are tougher and stronger against potential damage. So those are obviously things we'll just have to wait. I hope this was helpful for you guys to give you a bit of a perspective on what I think of the battery pack replacement issue and the battery issue in general. And hopefully this gives you a bit of an insight to think about. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up and please make some comments so maybe I can understand what you're looking for. Uh, and if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.